I can report to you our armed forces fought with honor and valor. And as president, I can report to the nation, aggression is defeated, the war is over. President Bush announcing the end of the Gulf War. And joining me now, two men who knew him well, former Vice President Dick Cheney, who served as Bush's Secretary of Defense during that war, and James Baker, who was the Secretary of State. Gentlemen, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Secretary Baker, let me start with you. You have called George Bush one of our most underrated presidents. What is it that you think people failed to understand about George Bush, and why do you think so many people missed it? Well, I'm not sure why they missed it, uh, Chris, except perhaps because he uh, was not reelected. He was a one-term president, uh, in my view, and I would bet this is true with uh, Dick Cheney as well. He was the very best one-term president this country's ever had, and uh, perhaps one of the very best presidents of all time. But he didn't blow his own horn. He was he. Uh, one of his uh, wonderful character traits was to let other people take credit. Uh, that was something he was brought up with, and that's the way he he operated. But he was an extraordinarily, if you think about it, you go back and look at the record. He was an extraordinarily consequential uh, president of the United States, particularly in the arena of foreign affairs. Let me pick up on that with Vice President Cheney. I think it's fair to say that clearly the centerpiece of the Bush presidency was the victory in the Gulf War over Saddam Hussein. What stands out for you about the way that he led that fight, and what about the controversy that we continue to hear his decision not to go on to Baghdad and topple Saddam? Well, in terms of uh, his leadership, um, important thing to remember, Chris, is what we put together during those years with Scowcroft at NSC and Jim at State, uh, me at Defense, and then, of course, the President's Commander-in-Chief. We'd all worked together back during the Ford years. And uh, it was, in my opinion, I'm probably biased, but uh, about the most successful national security, foreign affairs, defense team that uh, had been my experience to, to watch operate. No, um, you're absolutely accurate, Dick. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, well, the president obviously was a key part of it. And uh, Jim and Brent and I would have breakfast every Wednesday morning. And most of the time we could solve our problems among us. Once in a while we'd have to take it to him and then he'd resolve it. But he was a, a consequential leader, as, as you've said. His knowledge uh, of uh, foreign leaders, people he'd worked with over the years, his understanding of the military, his willingness to support the military. Uh, we gave him a very long list of things we wanted to have in the Gulf before we launched the offensive weapons. He didn't turn them down on anything. He approved all of them and said, all right, now show me how you're going to do it. He was a great leader. Se Sec Secretary Baker, one of the things that strikes me about George Bush is that he didn't take the easy path. He left Yale to volunteer and to become the n youngest Navy pilot. He left Connecticut. He could have had a very comfortable life there to strike out on his own and become an oil man in Texas. What do you think that was about? Well, I think it was about taking on the hard challenges. Uh, he was not afraid to take risks. No risk, no reward kind of thing. But let me, let me say a, a, a quick word, if I might, Chris, about the centerpiece, as you said, of, of his foreign policy presidency, uh, the war, uh, the first Gulf War, which was, in my view, a textbook example of a way to fight a war. You tell the world what you're going to do. You get the world, all the rest of the world behind you to do it. You do it. You do that and nothing more. Uh, you bring the troops home, and then you get other countries to pay for it. We've never done that before. That is a textbook example of the way to fight a war. But that, while that may be the centerpiece of his foreign policy uh, uh, accomplishments, it certainly wasn't a, the only one. And you look at uh, the fact that he was able to uh, to manage right. and end a peaceful end of the Cold War. That was a huge, huge accomplishment. Mr. Vice President, in 2015, uh, President Bush told a biographer that he worried that you had become too much of a hardliner in his son's White House, mm -hmm. and he called your approach, excuse me, his quote, uh, 
iron ass. And I, I wonder, one, what you thought of the criticism, and two, what did that do to your relationship with George Bush? Well, um, first of all, uh, I was uh, more, I guess, of an iron ass when uh, I was vice president. The uh, thing that had intervened between my time at defense for uh, 41 and my time as vice president was 9-11. We'd had 3,000 of our people killed on 9-11, more people than we lost at Pearl Harbor. <clears throat> and we moved, I think, legitimately into a wartime setting rather than simple law enforcement. Um, I think it was important to do that. Now, after uh, he made those comments, um, he uh, sent me a note. One of the notes are, are great to have. This one said, Dear Dick, I did it. And then he went on at great length to uh, tell me what a great American I was. Um, but he also, that year, we went to the annual Alpha Alpha Club. He enjoyed those dinners. And uh, he invited me to sit at the head table with him at the dinner, and that sort of dampened down any notion that there was a fundamental break between uh, Bush and Cheney. Hey, uh, Chris, that's the kind of person well, he was. I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to hear that, Let me say, that's the kind of person George Bush was. There was a story uh, early in his administration uh, in 1989 to the effect generally that, well, the National Security Council's running foreign policy, the State Department's out of it, they're not doing And I got a phone call from the president. He said, he said, Bake, I want you and Susan to come up to Camp David with me this weekend. We did so, and there was never another story like that for the entire four years. That's the kind of person he was. Secretary Baker, George Bush was not just your colleague, not just your boss. Uh, he was your dear friend for more than 60 years, and we have learned in the last few hours that you were with him when he passed away on Friday night to the degree you feel comfortable doing it. Can you share with us his last moments? Yeah, he had a very gentle and peaceful passing, uh, Chris. Uh, only one of his children was in, uh, living in Houston, uh, Neil Bush. Neil and his wife Maria were there. My wife Susan and I, uh, his, his rector from our church, St. Martin's Church in Houston, uh, the doctor, some of the wonderful aides that took care of him uh, in his later years. And it was a sweet, it was a sweet situation. Uh, uh, they made arrangements for all of his children to call in to, to, in effect, tell him goodbye. And his last words, the last words, George Bush ever said were, I love you, and he said those words to 43, George Bush, President George Bush 43, who had called in to say, Dad, I love you, uh, I will see you on the other side, and, uh, and President Bush said, I love you, and those were his last words. Another tender moment at, uh, about that, uh, Chris, was that the, ten, the Irish tenor Ronan Tynan was in town. He'd come to town just to pay a, a courtesy call on President Bush, and he happened to be there, and he sang a couple of songs for President Bush on that last evening, and he sang one of them was Silent Night, and as he was singing, President Bush was mouthing the words of Silent Night. He, he, uh, he had a very gentle and, and easy passing, the kind we ought to all hope we have. Secretary Baker, Mr. Vice President, we want to thank you both so much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.